What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp Essentials tutorial for you. So in this video we're going to go through some of the basics of modeling with SketchUp 2017. So uh, if, you're, if you're a new user to SketchUp, this video will introduce you to some of the basics. If you're a more advanced user, you may want to go ahead and just move on to another tutorial. But let's go ahead and just jump into it. So this video starts off with the assumption that you've downloaded and installed SketchUp on your computer. This video will work for both Pro and Make users. Um, I, make, I may make a video in the future just talking about the differences between SketchUp Pro and SketchUp Make, but generally speaking, um, you can do all of this with the free version of SketchUp, which is SketchUp Make. So we're going to start off and we're going to do a quick introduction to the workspace. There's several different parts of a SketchUp workspace. Uh, the first is the menu bar. So that's at the top of the page up here. It's got your file, edit, view. You can basically adjust just about anything in here. It's got things from where you would open and save your model to things where you would work with your different selections and cutting and copying and that kind of thing. You can adjust all your different camera stuff in here. Um, you have links to most of your drawing tools in here as well as some other things like extensions and all of your preferences and so if you want to change something that really affects the way SketchUp works it's probably up here. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is the toolbars. So the toolbars contain your different drawing tools so it's got links to all of your different drawing tools a lot of extensions that you download will have toolbar links as well and you can adjust these and turn on and off different toolbars by right clicking. If you right click up here depending on what you have installed you're gonna see different things. I have I have some different extensions installed and so I probably have more options than someone with a brand new installation. The one thing I would suggest is going ahead and right clicking in here and selecting large tool set. So if you select a large tool set it's going to pop up this set of tools on the left hand side of your screen. That's just going to have more of SketchUp's basic tools in here. You can also adjust the toolbars that you have by going to view toolbars and then selecting this in here. So if you want a different toolbar in here, you can just check the box and click close. The other thing you can do is you can check this box for large icons to make your icons smaller or larger. So you can adjust that in your toolbars section. So in addition to your toolbars section, you also have your tray. And you may not be able to see your tray depending on how, um, how your SketchUp is set up. Um, to see your tray, go to Window default tray and make sure show tray is checked and then there's a whole bunch of boxes in here for different things that you can adjust but basically this is going to contain different sections for adjusting the way that your model looks so you can adjust things like your styles or your different scenes as well as things for editing and getting more information on the objects in your model. For example, one of the things you'll probably use a lot of is the entity info. That'll give you information about the things that you have selected in your model. So things like layers or if you have lines in here and you select a line, the length of the line will show up in here. So a lot of different information is going to show up in your tray. There's also the status bar. The status bar contains instructions for your currently active tool as well as your measurements box. So this is going to contain things like if you have the line tool active, it's going to have instructions for how to use your active tool as well as the different dimensions that you have in here. So it'll show you the length of the active object that you have in here or some things have th there's, there's a lot of different things that will show up in here, but this is where you'll look for information on whatever tool that you have active if you don't know what to do next. There's also a couple other options in here for geolocation and information about things you've downloaded from the 3D warehouse that we'll talk about in a future video. And then finally, this is your workspace where you're actually going to draw your model. So we're going to start off, every model starts with this default model in here. You can go ahead and click on that and delete that. You don't really need that for anything. The one nice thing about that is it gives you a sense of scale. So like for example, this person is about actual person height in 3D. And so you can use that as kind of an idea of how big other things are as well. So if you were to draw a house and you had this person in here for scale and you were to make the house this tall, then you'd know that this is probably a little big to be a one-story 
house. So you can use this person for scale if you want, or you can just delete that out. I'm going to go ahead and delete that out. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the way SketchUp works. SketchUp is a face modeler, which basically means that SketchUp draws faces between any three coplanar lines. So that means any three lines that are on the same plane, SketchUp will draw a line between them. So for example, if I was to activate the line tool and I was to draw three lines just like this, if I was to draw three lines, you can see how SketchUp drew a face in between those lines. So there's basically two different kinds of things in a SketchUp model. There's faces and there's lines. So you can see how when I click on these lines, they turn blue. That's me selecting these lines. And if I click on this face, it kind of shades in. And you can see how things like areas show up in your entity info in your tray. So you can get information about those different tools. So all of your different tools in SketchUp have different inputs. And we're gonna start off very basic with the line tool. So if you come over here and you click on the line tool, then this is gonna allow you to draw a line in SketchUp. And you can see if you look down here, when I activated that line tool by clicking on it, there's an instruction for select your start point. So that's telling you what to do with your current object. So that says select your start point. And then once I click, you can see how now it says select endpoint or enter value. So what that's telling you is now tell SketchUp how long you want your line to be. So you can see how as I move my mouse, this line kind of fills in with it so you can see where your line would go when you set your second point. So you can click to set your second point to draw your line. And then one other thing to note is you can see how when I do this, if you look in the corner, there's a length option. So instead of clicking again, if I want to be more precise, like let's say I wanted to draw a 10 foot line, what I would do is I would move my mouse in the direction that I want to draw this line. I would type in 10 and then a foot sign and hit the enter key. And what that would do is that would draw a 10 foot line from this point to this point. And we can tell that that's 10 feet long because we can click on it and then look in the entity info and see that the length is 10 feet. So the other way you could check that is you could activate this tape measure tool. That's good for measuring distances and you could click between these two points. And you can see how down in the corner it tells you this is 10 feet long. So some tools in SketchUp have multiple inputs. So for example, if I activate the rectangle tool, you can see how it tells me to select my first corner. Well, what this is gonna do is this is actually gonna draw a rectangle between the two points that I select. And you can see how in the corner where the line tool had one dimension, this one has two. So you can see how this says six foot 11 comma six foot 11. So any object that's gonna have more than one dimension in it, you just separate the two dimensions with a comma. So if I wanted this to be a four foot by four foot rectangle, I would just type in four foot, comma, four foot, and hit the enter key. And what that does is that draws a rectangle with four foot long sides. So if I click on any of these sides, my entity info in my tray is gonna say that the length is four feet long. In addition, SketchUp automatically draws the face in between all these lines because these are coplanar lines. And one thing I want to talk about really quick is if I activate the rectangle tool, you can see how my rectangle right now is blue. That means that's oriented to the blue plane. So if you look at the intersection of these three lines, SketchUp basically it gives you these guidelines along the different axes. So the, the green axis basically runs this way, the red axis runs this way, and the blue axis runs up and down. So the blue indicates up and down. Well, you can see how right now, the little box that's coming off of my cursor is blue. That's indicating that I'm gonna draw a face along basically the blue axis or the blue plane. Well, what SketchUp will allow you to do is it'll allow you to tap the arrow keys to lock this to the different axes. So for example, if I tap my right arrow key, you can see how this turns red. That's gonna draw a box along the red plane. 
same thing if I tap the left arrow key that's gonna lock my tool to the green plane and it's gonna draw a box along the green plane so you can use you can use your keyboard to adjust the way that different tools work in SketchUp and that'll work with the lines as well so if I type my left arrow key you can see how that locked my line to the green axis or if I tap the right arrow key it'll lock me to the blue one or if I tap my up arrow key it's gonna sorry if I tap my right it'll lock me to the red axis if I tap the up key you can see how it locks this tool to the blue axis we'll get into that a little more later so now that we've talked about a couple of the drawing tools we're gonna talk about extruding an object into 3d and so what that means is let's say I have a rectangle like this and I want it to be a 3d rectangle what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a tool called the push-pull tool which is basically this little icon with a little box and a red arrow sticking out of it so if I click on that and then I click on a flat face what that's gonna do is that's gonna take an object and extrude it or move it into 3d um, so that it has so that it maintains all of these different faces and these different sides. So if I was to move this using the move tool, you can see how all it does is moves this face around. But if I use the push pull tool, it extrudes it. So basically it takes this face, it moves it up and it creates all this corresponding geometry. So this stays as kind of a solid object. One tool that's gonna be really important for you is gonna be the orbit tool. So the orbit tool is just gonna allow you to fly around your model or your object. And one thing that's kind of important for PC users is to use a three button mouse. So you wanna use a mouse with a scroll wheel because what you can do is you can just click and hold that center mouse button and orbit around your model. You can also go up to camera and select orbit and then click and drag with your left mouse button or you can click on that little icon over here as well and then click and drag or you can tap the O key to activate the orbit tool and click and drag but the fastest thing is going to be to hold down your center mouse button and drag your mouse to orbit around your model so and you can see how i use the push pull tool to extrude this object into 3d well not only can you extrude objects into 3d you can also use this to cut holes in different faces so if i come in here and i draw a circle and then i activate the push pull tool and I click and I move my mouse, you can see if I move my mouse out, it'll extrude this circle out into 3D, but it'll also, you can see how as I move my mouse backwards along this face, it'll extrude a hole into my shape. So if I click anywhere on this back face, you can see how this is drawing a little dotted line out here. That's called inferencing. That's basically telling you once you've activated the push pull tool that you can move this out and you can see how you can do it without having your mouse over your object so all I have to do is move this to the back face and then no matter where I click on this face it's gonna you're basically telling it the length to extrude that hole so if I click on that face now and I finish that extrusion and then I rotate around you can see how that actually you can see how that actually cut a hole along this face so you can use the push pull tool to add and subtract material not only can you use that to create a hole in an object you can also use that to remove material so if I come to this corner and I draw an arc across it and then I use the push pull tool you can see how that's removing material from my object and if I click on this back face it'll remove that material completely and just leave this as a curved face along this edge. And the last thing I'm gonna talk about in this video is you cannot extrude or push-pull curved surfaces um, in SketchUp without using an extension. So the base SketchUp won't allow you to push-pull a curved surface and here's why. If you go up to view and you click this box for hidden geometry, you can basically see the geometry that makes up this face and you see how as I move my mouse over these different faces it kind of shades them in that's because curves in SketchUp I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see aren't actually made up of real curving faces what they're made up of is a whole bunch of different segments and flat faces so you can see how when you look at this these are all actually flat faces so if I was to click on one of those you can extrude that out with the hidden geometry turned on but it won't allow you to push pull this whole curve face because then you'd be trying to extrude multiple faces at once and there are some extensions that can do that 
but a basic SketchUp model won't let you do that. So, and then you can go back to view and check this box for hidden geometry. You can check that box for hidden geometry to turn, to turn all that hidden geometry back off. In the next video, we're gonna talk about the basics of creating a house. So we'll go through and create our actual first model in SketchUp. So that's where we're gonna wrap up part one of this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Are you new to SketchUp? Um, is there something you'd like to do that you don't know how to do? Was any of this confusing for you? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider visiting my support me page on my website. That's the sketchupessentials.com slash support. That has everything from extensions you can purchase to support the show to links to my Patreon page. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.